How do you run your manufacturing process? Well, today we're going to be talking about Visi, which is a full CAD CAM package. Now, Paul, what does Visi excel at? And how does it help people bring in a 3D model from a customer and, and finish up with an actual part in their hand? Okay, Visi's strengths really is it's a, it's a single platform. So it's a single interface that can be integrated into a manufacturing environment for mainly aimed for tooling and die sector. Um, so we'll handle any data. We don't care really where the data's come from. We'll import it into our interface and we have no need for a history tree. We direct modeling, so we'll just grab the data and run with it. So we'll interrogate that data, see how good it is for manufacture. We have tools to feed back any uh, findings we have regarding problems with the manufacturer. And what kind of problems might there be? So, um, Designers can be quite creative in the geometry they create and they focus so much on uh, the aesthetics of a part, the manufacturer of the part then is outside the price or realistic price remit of, of manufacture. So what we want to do is highlight um, issues like undercuts and just things to make a robust manufactured uh, component for the future really. Okay, so design for manufacturers is very different from design for pure aesthetic purposes. Yes, so and how does Vizzy help you get a part, a part from a part that has, it's been designed just to look fantastic to a part that looks fantastic but also is easier to manufacture? So it's robustness really. I mean, you want uh, robust... And what kind of operations would you be doing? With? What, would you be, what would you be doing with the CAD system physically to try and change the part? So it's a, it's a process. So basically there's a, a range of tools that are quite uh, specific for the sort of tooling industry. So very quick uh, graphical tools to be able to highlight very quickly. So it's fine if you've got a small part, you can usually find those parts very easily, but if you've got big parts like bumpers, there's a lot of geometry going on. To be able to quickly get drawn into these problem areas is, is you want to overcome them as quickly as possible. So Great. that sounds like a real workflow. It looks sounds like it sounds like it speeds up your workflow a hell of a lot if you're dealing with big complex parts. It certainly is, and I've gone into customers that have thrown complicated parts at me, and within seconds I'm highlighting parts that they didn't even know about their own components. So it, it really uh, draws customers in to uh, uh, the product. Brilliant. So a tool and die manufacturer's friend, but it's not just when you sat at the software looking at all the little problem faces and stuff. You've actually got to make the part as well. Uh, we're going to talk to George about exactly how you turn that design into a realistic product. George, we just heard from Paul how VisiCAD is so good at the design work when you do mold and die tooling and other kinds of parts as well. But look at this demo here. You're showing us about you can actually make a real part. Is VisiCAM really that fully functional? Yeah, it is. We've got so many different operations helping us to achieve the shape we need. Uh, we got the uh, tool insert, so this is the demo part to show, uh, show you what exactly we can do, what the type of machining we can uh, achieve. Okay, so we got drilling operations, which is two and a half axis machining. We got three axis operations like uh, waveform roughing and, and three plus two operations. Yeah, absolutely. You axis. can see there's lots of different indexing here. There's this kind of general flat surfaces you'd see on like a normal three-axis part, but then yes. you've got interspersed in all the standard kind of flat bits where the insert yeah. fits in. You've got these lovely curves and forms and yeah. sharp edges and weird angles. And would you say that's what kind of Visi will excel at? Is this kind of it's st your standard three-axis kind of three plus two machining, and then mm. these beautiful forms going across all of that? Okay, so. So how I, how I designed the meaning of this, I just try to use the 3 plus 2 quite a lot because the, uh, so the most of flat face I use the uh, planar operation to finish them and use like a 5 axis and 3 axis operation to finish transition between two faces. Okay. Because uh, that's the most complicated bit when you're doing 5 axis, trying to get the mismatch. When you've, you've orientated like this, you've milled yeah, it, you've orientated yeah, like that, you milled yeah. it. That little mismatch is always going to be there unless you have some nice little smoothing operation. So basically we can use a lot of different type of tools. Uh, in this exactly element of, or feature of this, we use the barrel cutter supplied by Seco and, and use the five axis operation to use it to machine uh, this face. You can see the finish is quite good even with five axis uh, machining using five different axes in the same time. And you can see across the whole part, there's really beautiful finishes all over it, like you mm -hmm. say. But how do you make it so easy to get those blending passes so good? 
Okay, so software allow me to find these faces very easily and apply the strategy I want to achieve the better results. So it could be five axis, could be three axis operation, could be three, three plus two op options. Yeah, and that, that, that is the way how we get that good finish there. Brilliant. Those blends are definitely the most important bit because if, if, yeah. if you've got a, a plastic part coming off and it's got a bit of a scuff yes, on it, it doesn't matter how great the rest of the finish is, that's, people are going to look at that scuff, aren't they? True. So if you're making um, mold and die tooling inserts, but not just mold and die tooling inserts, Fizzy excels at 3 plus 2, 5 axis, good finishes, you need to check it out.